everybody so today i'm coming back to you with a new valentine's day nail design i'm taking off my old design right now i'm using a pair of old nail nippers to take off the jewels i was going to try to take off that little teddy bear jewel but i realized when i go to clip off the free edge it'll just come off with that so i didn't have to worry about trying to get it off but you can use the nippers to get off larger stones or crystals or gems like that if needed um, and then once i clip those off off. I just was trying to be aware of my extended hyponychiums, which I have on pretty much every nail So that's why I clip them upside down just so I can see that I go in with a coarse carbide bit and My Kiara Sky e-file and I just go ahead and I use this actually in reverse even though I'm using um, My right hand to file on my left hand because I actually use the drill Kind of the opposite way you typically do when doing it on a client. I do it going away from myself so that's why I use it in reverse when I need to pull it towards myself I will flip it to the forward motion so I go ahead and I file off all of that old colored acrylic and I file it down to the clear base on the two nails where I clip the free edge off on the other ones I just file off the gel polish and gel top coat and kind of leave it at that so I could do my fill Now I'm going in with a cuticle pusher and I'm just gonna go ahead and push back the cuticles on all of my fingers. You could do this before you go ahead and do that first step, but I just waited, it was no big deal. Um, it doesn't get in the way of me filing off the color, but you do wanna do it before you go ahead and prep the natural nail so that you expose any dead skin and cuticle so that when you go in with your sanding band, um, which this one I'm using is a 150 grit, um, you actually are able to get into all the nooks and crannies so I am using um, three to four thousand rpms on the Kiara sky drill and I am just going around on the natural nail to prep it but I'm also like right here going over that colored acrylic just to take down any little remaining areas I don't go too perfect with the carbide bit because I don't want to chunk out my natural nail so I just go in with the sanding band for any last minute like touch-ups or getting small little areas of the acrylic that's still on there Now I'm gonna go in with some rubbing alcohol. I use 91% if I'm doing it to cleanse the nail before application, and I'm using a little manicure brush just to clean off all my nails. Um, so just kind of pull away from yourself to remove all that dust. Then I'm gonna go in with the Nail Prof um, Nail Primer. This is, I think, the first time I had tried it, so I don't really have too much to say about it quite yet. Um, I thought it did work fairly well, um, but as far as comparison to other ones that I really love I'm not sure quite yet I'll have to play with it a little bit more so I'm applying that to the natural nail area on the um, middle and ring finger and then applying it all over for my pointer and pinky since I took off those nails Now this is the Mr. Buttons brush by Kirsty Meekin. I am trying this out. You will see that I will kind of go back and forth between this brush and the Young Nails Greg brush. Um, I am not the biggest fan of this Mr. Buttons brush um, or the Oscar the Wild brush. I feel like the bristles are just a little bit more wiry almost, like they fray out a little bit more and I feel like it's a lot more easy for acrylic to get stuck in it than the Alicia Sculpt or the Izzy Busy brush by her but I'm still trying to play around with it because I love the handle and I love the detail to it so I do want to make it work she also says that um, these are her favorite brushes so I don't know maybe it's just me and I'll have to play with it some more so I'm going in with the Mia secret nude blush acrylic this is one of my favorite nudes um, and I'm just gonna do my fills on the rest so here you can see I swapped out the brush but I am going to keep trying the mr. buttons brush by Kirsty Meekin and hopefully find ways to make it work for me so I will keep you guys updated on that if there are tips or tricks on how to make it work a little better
I'm also going in and just adding a little bit extra acrylic on any areas that I feel are a little bit low and need a little bit more structure to them. Um, so when you do your fills, just try to take a look at the nail again. Um, sometimes you can chunk out little pieces when you go to file off um, any gel polish and top coat. So you just want to make sure you add that back in to keep your structure sound um, for your next set. And then I went ahead with some clear. This is the Speed Clear by Young Nails. And I have um, one of my long forms on, pointed out to a stiletto shape. And I am just using the clear to connect my nail to the form and then doing a thin base of clear along the actual nail bed so that when I file off any color, um, I just file off to the clear. I am going to be using Cover Rosebud from Young Nails as my color for this set. Um, the other nails that already had nude blush are going to be covered by some gel polish, so I didn't really bother changing those out. So these ones are the ones that you're really going to see, and I wanted a more rosy pink with a slight shimmer versus the warmer nude that the Mia Secret is. So that's why I'm using this one. I'm using some little heart glitter charm designs from Amazon I believe and I'm just taking a hot pink and a red mixing those together and then I will apply those into this nail but first I'm taking that cover rosebud to build out my free edge to give me that background now I've done before where when I'm building the free edge I kind of tap my brush onto the paper towel just to take out any excess monomer to make it easier for me to mold the acrylic sometimes I find that that gets tricky for me and the acrylic just dries a little too fast so what I'm trying here is actually just holding the acrylic on the brush for a couple extra seconds and then going in and applying it so it's not as runny but it's still runny enough that it's easily moldable and it doesn't get too thick too fast um, that's just my preference you will notice that um, I do a lot of beads to build this free edge and build this nail not everybody is fine with doing that some people prefer to do it in the minimal amount of beads that they can I don't mind doing more beads if it gets me the end result that I want anyway um, and maybe a little bit cleaner than it would be if I tried to struggle with a larger bead so do it the way that you prefer I left in as much of this as possible so that you guys can see how I did it and how much time I really do take to try to perfect the shape so that I don't have as much filing later on Another thing you're probably noticing is that I go ahead and wipe my brush quite often and I actually use the beads a lot wetter than normal because I find that that helps me with this type of brush to keep the acrylic from sticking to the bristles. Um, it depends on what acrylic and the brush you're using on what that ratio is gonna look like. Um, but for me, for this particular brush, wiping it off and 
cleaning it in the monomer more often helps me in keeping those bristles a little bit tighter because they do fray out quite easily like I said um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some more of that acrylic onto the actual nail bed I'm not doing this very thick because I'm not building the apex quite yet I do want to go ahead and inlay those glitter hearts and I want to leave enough space for that so I am doing this as thin as possible but I want the background to be a solid color so I am taking that cover rosebud all the way back to the cuticle. Now I'm working with Speed Clear. I like to do this when I'm doing um, like inlays of little glitters or crystals because I find that it's a lot easier to keep them in place um, since it dries a little faster. So what I do is I just pick up a little of that Speed Clear on the brush, a very, very tiny bead. I use that to pick up the little glitters and then I put that where I want it onto the nail. So I'm just kind of haphazardly throwing this onto the pinky nail um, just to have little hearts kind of filtered through it um, you can do it a little bit more precise if you want um, to me it didn't really matter as long as it was more towards the center since this is a stiletto when you go to file you will file out the sides um, if they stick out too far so you just want to make sure that they're um, more towards the middle of the nail to help prevent that um, especially because these are hearts the shape actually matters so um, you know it's not like a mylar where there's jagged shapes and edges anyway and it, you won't really notice it you do want to try to keep the shape as much as possible after filing so once i'm done with that i go in with the same speed clear by young nails and i go ahead and i encapsulate all that glitter and i build up my apex so i'm going to apply again as many beads as possible um, or as needed to try to get the apex the way i want it to be and make sure that i am encapsulating these glitters really well so that they don't get filed out So I didn't go and show you the filing just to try to keep this video a little bit shorter, um, but it's just my normal filing. I've showed it in a couple other videos, so you could take a look at those if you want to see how I do it. Um, but I'm using 70% rubbing alcohol to cleanse my nails. I find that the 91% um, or acetone leaves kind of a film on the acrylic when I use those, so I just prefer the 70%. Um, and I'm just cleaning that off, and now I'm going in with some black um, craft acrylic paint. Um, I got this from Michaels anyone really works I'm using one of those brushes from Michaels as well kind of a liner brush I found that this was a little too thick so I do change it out for the young nails micro detailer brush later on um, but for right now this is what I'm starting with I did put the paint on a paper towel I feel like I have a hard time cleaning off the paint on my tile palette that I normally use um, because it dries down but I found that this actually absorbs the paint and it makes it a little harder to use so I don't particularly like this method either I'm still trying to find a way to um, have a palette with the acrylic paints um, that is a little easier on cleanup just because I want it to be easy to clean up at the end after they've kind of dried down a bit and are a little bit harder to remove but I also want it to be um, easy to pick up and use while I'm doing the design so I will get back to you on that I wouldn't recommend doing it this way though um, and now what I'm doing is I'm drawing my jar I am doing a jar of hearts design on this nail I will say um, doing it on myself was very difficult for me um, just because I have to kind of flip upside down right side up sideways to try to be able to see the whole nail um, which you should do in general but if you do it on a client you're gonna be more head on um, than most other angles whereas doing it on yourself you're gonna be sideways or upside down more often so um, unless you're able to keep this hand position which I am NOT um, to be able to see head-on I found that um, it was a little difficult to draw the jar and kind of keep the lines even and symmetrical and all of that so I would probably have gone in with a pencil and just drawn out the design or sketched it out just kind of a rough design so that I had a guideline when I went in with the paints um, so 
This is just kind of my trial and error. You will see that I'm gonna go in with some acetone to try to clean up the mistakes that I made. Um, you can use acetone. Um, water works a little bit. It's a little bit more tricky with water, um, but I use acetone and a small brush just to clean up um, the lines that I felt were a little too thick or if the line um, wasn't done the way I wanted it and I wanted to try to redo it, um, like right there, I did go ahead and use the acetone for that as well. So. I kept this in so that you guys could see that I do make a lot of mistakes. I am not a artist as far as drawing and things like that. So this is a lot of trial and error for me. Um, and I wanted you guys to kind of see the process because especially if you're beginners, um, it really shows you that it's not the easiest thing, but there are ways to fix it if you do make mistakes or feel like the design isn't coming out the way that you want. So this is how I fix this mistake and um, hopefully it helps you guys when you're trying out designs like this. I don't know where some of the footage went where I added a little bit more of the black detailing um, so I do apologize for that um, I realized that as I was editing that I did not know where that footage ended up going so I don't know if I forgot to press record or what um, but I did add a couple little details for the lid and just the inside of the jar to make it look a little more 3d um, and now I'm going in with some white acrylic paint and I'm just adding some highlights so um, I highlighted the bottom of the jar and I'm going in and kind of creating the inside of the lid. I will go ahead and outline the lid with some black acrylic paint um, and do kind of a little ridge on the inside of this white circle that I'm drawing or oval, um, whatever you want to call it, um, just to give it a little bit more dimension. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. I'm just playing around with it. One thing I do like about acrylic paints is they layer up pretty nicely. Um, so when I go in for that little detail for the ridge on the inside of the jar lid, I found that it wasn't perfect and I needed to kind of clean it up, but I was easily able, once it dried down just a little bit, to go in with the white acrylic paint and just clean up the edges. So I find that doing that really helps me when I'm doing designs like this, just kind of layering the two colors to help kind of crispen up the lines and the edges um, and get the effect that you want. Now I'm going in with a dotting tool and some red acrylic paint and I am basically doing a typical heart design. Um, so I'm just doing two dots right next to each other and then taking a small detail brush and connecting them into a V um, after that. I am finding that it's a little bit harder with the acrylic paint to do this particular design. Um, it's not impossible, I made it work, um, but I probably, if I was going to do this um, portion of the design, I probably would have done it in like a gel polish or something instead, um, just to give me a little bit more like mobility and time to work with it, because acrylic paint dries with the air, whereas gel polish um, needs to be cured to dry, so it gives you a little bit more wiggle room. Um, I will say, 
gel polish is really good for beginners if you find that you struggle with designs and really need that extra time um, and are struggling with um, like things like acrylic paints that do just dry down on their own um, gel polish does work it does give kind of a different effect um, than the acrylic paint so I use both but for this design I ended up using acrylic paint um, solely and it, I made it work I would just will say it is a little bit harder to do these little hearts um, so I go ahead and I fill up that jar with some of the hearts I did lose some other footage um, later on of doing a couple hearts outside of the jar um, so I apologize for that but it's the same concept I just did them slightly bigger and then once I'm done with this I'm gonna go back in with that white acrylic paint and I'm just going to outline all of the hearts that I have created I found that I didn't feel like they were like popping the way that I wanted them to and they didn't really stand out where you could tell that they were hearts by themselves so I thought that it needed just a little bit of contrast and the way that I did that was just outlining it with the white acrylic paint Here is where I'm just outlining those bigger hearts um, that I did off camera, I guess, or maybe lost the footage, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but I wanted to add some stuff to the background. I didn't want it to just be the jar by itself. Um, and since I didn't do like a colored polish underneath, um, I thought that adding just a couple accent little things would work out best. So I did some hearts and then I went in with the dotting tool again and that white paint, and I just did a couple dots just all around the hearts on the outside. And I really really like the way that this nail came out I was super happy with the outcome at the end um, you could probably see that my jar isn't perfectly straight but it still um, came out the way that I liked um, and I was happy with it at least for my first try with this design so I go ahead with my eye gel I think this is their regular their original top coat and I just top coat those encapsulated nails um, I leave the acrylic paint design nail to the end so that it has time to dry but I will top coat that with the same gel polish um, and then I'm using my young nails go time gel polish this does not need a top coat so I just do two coats of this color which is am I right am I right I believe and this one is just like a dark wine color and I felt like it matched that red acrylic paint that I use really well so I did this on my ring finger and on my thumb and once you're done with that, that is it for this design. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I had so much fun doing this video for you guys. I really loved how these came out. If you guys try to recreate this, definitely tag me um, and show me those. You can follow me on Instagram. It's Gab's Glam Room, same as here on YouTube. I am really hoping to be able to build my channel up. Um, my goal is to reach 1,000 subscribers. So if you can help me with that by subscribing to this channel, liking this video, um, and commenting below, letting me know what you guys would like to see from me in the future i am really excited to start this nail video journey and really get kind of hit the ground running with it and get really um creative with some of my designs because i love doing nails and i feel like it's kind of bringing me out of my box so um yeah comment below letting me know what you'd like to see in the future like this video if you did and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more from me other than that i hope you guys have a wonderful valentine's day um or or just a wonderful day in general and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everybody!